Hello students. So welcome to another video. So I hope all of you are doing well. So today we can see the another topic introduction to management. So that is the first unit of your fourth year nursing management subject and post BSc management subject. So here I am taking an overall brief view of your first chapter that is general management aspect. Here I am taking definitions of management, definition of administration, definition of nursing management, then levels of management, difference between administration and management, principles of management, then functions of management and we are going to see in detail or brief view of your post D corp. So we can see one by one. First we can see nursing management. Under that nursing administration, so we can see that first what do you mean by administration? The administration, the word that minister has been derived from a Latin word, at plus minister, you know that. The meaning of that, manage the affairs or look after the people or serve the people. So this definition is given by Luther Gullick. So he has given the first definition, all of you have to by heart that. Administration has to do with getting things done with the accomplishment of defined objectives. So we are trying to accomplish the objectives of the organization by getting things done. Okay. Then second definition is given by Herbert A. Simon. Administration is the activities of group of cooperating to accomplish common goal. Group means group of people, here what they mean, okay, to cooperating to accomplish the common goal. So this definition is clear, I think, no need for further explanation. So you just learn that. Next we can see what do you mean by management. Management, to manage is to forecast, to plan, to organize, to coordinate and to control and this definition is given by Henry Foyle. So he is the father of scientific management. So that is the definition, one definition and second definition is management is a process involving planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling human efforts to achieve stated objectives in an organization. Okay. So that is the second definition, it is a process involving the planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling human efforts to achieve stated objectives in an organization. So these are the two simple definition of management. I think these two uh, definitions are clear. So then next we can see what do you mean by nursing management. Nursing management, it is the process of working through nursing personnel to promote and maintain health, prevent illness and suffering. The role of nurse manager is to plan, organize, direct and control available resources in order to provide effective economic care to group of clients efficiently. So the same role the nurse manager also is performing like a general manager what they are doing. Okay, the same way that is the meaning of nursing management. I think it is clear. So then we can see the differences between the administration and management. So before that we have to see that the levels of management. Levels of management mainly the two levels, three levels are there classified into three categories on the basis of hierarchy. Okay, on the basis of hierarchy and their positions and their uh, relative responsibilities. That is top level, middle level and supervisory level or operative level. 
who all are coming there in this top level in nursing service assistant directors or top management that may be director of nursing or chief nursing officer or nursing superintendent who are who all are the person there in the top management so they are the source of authority and they are the one who is establishing the goals policies objectives for the nursing services they are planning and coordinating the functions and they are accountable for the nursing service for which they are serving second category is the middle level management so that is the head of the unit or supervisory levels especially floor supervisors or shift supervisors usually we are telling they are responsible for the top management for the functioning of their department and designated as maybe a sister grade 1 and then uh, nursing personnel in the shift supervisors they are coming under the middle level managers so they follow and implement the policies and guidelines issued to them by the top nursing management and they are the one who is evaluating the performance of the operating level nursing personnel and coordinating with other departments or team to ensure that the best possible patient care they are giving and they supervise and they solve the problems of the operating level or supervisory level managers i think it's clear the third level is the in the hierarchy of management they are operative level or supervisory level management they comprises of nurses at the operational level they are designated as staff nurses or sister grade 2 they are responsible for the patient care so they plan and take the decision for the care of their assigned patient and they carry out the instructional instructions given by the superiors and the team members so these all are the main three levels of management top level middle level and supervisory level i think it's clear so then we can see the difference between administration and management that's very important so first what do you have to write it there first give one definition of administration and management and then you can write the differences administration is a higher level function okay when we are comparing and the management is a lower level function administration is concerned with the setting of objectives determination of policies procedures programs management is execution function what the managers are doing they are executing the plan what it has made by the administration level okay so here they have given three columns and on the first column what all the basis for the where he, how we are differentiating them administration and management the first one is the levels of organization already i told you administration is the top level and the management is middle and the lower level function then major factors administration has policy formulation objective determination policy undakunnathum objectives formulate cheynathum administration aanu management is policy execute cheyuga adu practical aayittu implement cheyuga then third one is the nature of function administration has to take determinative they are the decision making and policy formulation and then management is executive they are implementing the plans which is done by the administrative level then scope scope under that administrative level it's broad and conceptual it's very broad concept and then management narrow and operational that means they are just implementing the plans policies and protocols prepared by the administrative level then factors affecting the decision in administration the factors may mainly the factors affecting are from the external sources what are the changes are in the external source that will affect them here in the management it is purely internal that's within the organization i think this slide is clear so we can move on to the remaining portions 
then employee employer relations so here in administration it is an entrepreneur owner relation entrepreneur nu arnya business owners aan they are the one who is entrepreneurs but the managers are employees only managers are employees only then qualities required by the both the persons administrators requires administrative quality and management requires managerial or technical qualities next point is the administration is an enabling process and then management is putting administration into practice that's the regarding the decision making also decision is made by the administrative level and the implementation by the management level already i have told you different book text has given different concept here uh, these differences which i have taken from the general management text so i think it's clear so you just uh, review that i think these points are clear the difference between administration and uh, management so usually they are asking the question usual question is there for the university exam what are the difference between administration and uh, management then another important aspect is the principles of management i think uh, here we are discussing with the 14 principles which is given by the henry foyle that's the most commonly uh, asking principles and that you are learning so the first one is division of work so this principle implies that every employee should be assigned only one type of work so as to bring about specialization in every activity division of work nu arnu specialization the employee has to uh, specialize in that area especially like uh, doctors nurses like that example okay then second principle authority and responsibility authority means the right to give orders by a superior to her subordinates authority means the power or the right to give orders by the superior to her subordinates then what do you mean by responsibility means the obligation for the performance of the employee obligation obligation for performance then accountability means answerable to the task the person who all are doing the performance or responsibility along with that they have to have the accountability also so these three aspect will go side by side okay there is a parity between authority responsibility and accountability i think it's clear next is the discipline discipline refers to getting obedience to the rules and regulations of the organization okay the employees or the uh, all all the personnel should have a obedience to the rules and regulations of the organization next is the unity of command unity of command means every subordinate must receive orders and instructions from only one superior oru superior inde kai nu mathrame subordinates orders receive cheyamallo not more than one superior that is what it if an employee receive orders from more than one superior there is a chance of overlapping of the orders and instructions to avoid that unity of command is very important the next is the unity of direction unity of direction means only one head should be given the direction that means all the activities of a unit or group it should be directed towards the same goal and those working at the same level hierarchy lana unity of direction the importance so one level to the next level it has to flow okay that's very important unity of direction next one is the subordination subordination of individual interest to general interest okay so personal uh, interest we have to consider but our main aim is to organizational objectives to achieve the organizational objective is the first priority for an employee okay therefore the interest and goals of the organization must be the priority one than the personal interest that is subordination then remuneration 
Remuneration means fair treatment of the employee with the salary. That is the remuneration. The employee must be just and fair to everyone so that each employee get motivated to work. Employer has to pay for the their work. Okay. Pay for the work. That is the pay for the services. Okay. That is the financial and non-financial benefits. That is remuneration. Then next one is the centralization. Centralization is an important aspect of important principle or the functions of the organization. Authority centralized or decentralized. Two terms are there. What is centralized means authority rests at the top level of the management or organization. The top level. The authority is resting on the top level that you mean by uh, centralization. Centralized centralization. Okay. If it is delegated to the different department that is the decentralization. Okay. There should be a proper balance between the centralization and the decentralization. Next is the hierarchy or scalar chain of command. That is very important. Scalar chain of or hierarchy means it is the chain of superiors ranging from top management to the lowest rank. That is the top level manager to the lower level manager in a stepwise manner. So, this principle suggests that there is a clear line of authority from top to bottom and all the managers to be covered there in the scalar chain of command. Next is the order. Order means, so there is a uh, social order or there is everything to be there in a systematic way that is what it means the order okay ensure the safety and efficiency of the workplace okay all the facilities systematically arranged and uh, according to the need of the organization then comes equity equity means equal treatment equal and uh, fair treatment of or impartial treatment of all employees that you mean by equity next is the stability of tenure of personnel. So, the job of employee should not be too short and they should not be rotated from positions frequently. That means stability of tenure of personnel or a person So, if they are satisfied with that workplace and that work, better to be there in that organization. Okay. Periodically, we are uh, the employees are shifting from one place to another place that will make a instability in the organization that is what is stability of tenure of person. So, the organization has to make sure that uh, retain the employees, retention of the skilled employees. Okay. Then comes the initiative. Subordinates should be given an opportunity to take initiative in the workplace okay utilize their strength okay of all the employees make them to have so show some interest that is done by the initiative then comes esperit de corps esperit de corps means union is strength okay that means there is a sense of belonging there is a sense of belonging that means team spirit or spirit of loyalty or devotion okay the managers need to ensure that they develop morale in the workplace and they have to maintain a team spirit among the employees. That is what it means, a spirit D corps. So, these all are the 14 principles given by the Henry Foyle. I think for a basic students that is sufficient for you. So, these 14 principles usually they are asking during the exam. I think it is clear. Then these terminologies you should know the three terminologies are there. First one is the responsibility that is obligation of concerned person to carry out the function. Responsibility means obligation okay, of carrying out the function or the task. Second authority. Authority means right to decide, command and perform the assigned responsibility. Okay, That is the power 
to perform the task. Next is the accountability. Accountability means answerability. Answerability no cha what they have done the task. They are the responsible one. Answerability of a subordinate to his superior for performance of the assigned task. So that is these three terms continuously we are using throughout the uh, management uh, process. So that is responsibility, authority and uh, accountability. I think it is clear. I think up to here the portion is clear to you. Then we can move on to the next one is the delegation. One more term we should know that what do you mean by delegation? That is decentralization of authority and decision making power to accomplish the task. Four terminologies are important that we use the delegation means reassigning the task to the subordinates. So that is what it called as delegation. So next we can see functions of management. Functions of management it is given by Luther Gullick the father of management and uh, along with the uh, Erwick. So in 1937 they classified the management functions with an synonym acronym post D corp. What is post D corp? Planning, organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating, reporting and budgeting. So the usual question in the university examiner, what are the functions of management in the question I'm direct at the Chodikim. So according to the mark, you have to write the explanation for this post D corp. Okay. Later I will explain briefly what do you mean by post D corp. Then before that, you should know what are the elements of management process. Elements of management process. They are the five elements and it is given by Henry Foyle. Okay. Henry Foyle has reorganized these functions of management under five heading. That is planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling. Throughout this uh, management classes, we are learning these five aspects of elements of management process. Already functions of management I told you post D corp. The last reporting, budgeting and these two aspects are included in the controlling aspect. Okay. Reporting and budgeting included in the controlling aspect. So that is why this planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling are the elements of management process. So then I think it is clear. So then we can see each one briefly. So dear students, here I am taking a brief view of general management aspect. So usually university exam, they may ask individually the planning, organizing, controlling and all those things. I am giving you, if a essay question is there regarding the functions of management, so you have to write briefly about this all components of the functions of management. First one we can see the planning. What do you mean by planning? Planning is the primary function of management. The definition is planning is a process of determining the objectives of administrative effort and devising the means calculated to achieve them. So I told you I have taken all this from the general management topic, textbook. So planning is a process of determining the objectives determine objectives achieve devices and the formulate planning. Then we can see what are the features of planning. Planning it is a process, it is a continuous process that is what it called as planning. Then it involves selection of suitable course of action. Suitable course of action, what are the different steps are there or the methods are there that they are choosing under the planning. That is what it called as suitable course of action. Then it undertake all the levels of organization. Planning undertakes all the levels of organization. So that means 
we are preparing the objectives policies strategies programs for the nursing services or for any enterprises okay so here they are taking the decision making who will take the decision what to do when to do where to do how to do who has to do so answer to all these questions they are done or they are taking in the planning stage then it's a future oriented process that already told you it's a they are mainly concerned with a entire function of the organization then next comes the continuous process it is a continuous process it's not uh, static or it's not for only one position it is from the entire organization it's a covering then it's continuous and then it's an intellectual process i told you the top level administrators they are involved in the functions of this first function planning then it's a flexible planning is flexible then only the organization can work efficiently then we can move on to the importance of planning that minimize the risk and uncertainty if planning is good then the other functions are very easily we can move that is what it means minimize the risk and uncertainty then it leads to success if they have a proper plan then they can lead to proper achieve the organizational goal then it focuses attention on the organizational goal avrude main task nu arnya organization de goal achieve eega ennalladana then it helps in coordination coordination of all the other functions that is what it called as coordination then primacy of planning that is the first one under the functions of management this is the first one then increase the organizational effectiveness planning will increase the organizational uh, performance or organizational efficiency then it to facilitate control if a good planning is there that will facilitate the control i think these importants are clear okay then next comes principles principles of planning id ingane thane chodikkam allengile oru planning thane chodikkam or post decorb inde ullil chodikkam so it must focus on purposes that is the first one purpose is the main task of planning okay why what where how who answer to all these questions are there in the planning function then it's a continuous process already i told you then we are maintaining a good harmony with the organization and the environment then only this uh, organization can exist then is hierarchical in nature top to bottom then it cover the entire organization so planning is not only centered on the a uh, single area or on the top level it's a uh, all the departments or the areas are covering that it must precise in its uh, objective it should be very clarity clear in the objective settings and the formulation use all available resources man money material machine methods everything to be utilized then it should be documented that's very important for the proper functioning of any organization this planning should be documented what all the steps we are doing that should be documented i think it's clear this uh, principles you just to review that okay then comes the steps of planning steps of planning the first one is the generate informations so we have to generate information from the available resources from what all the resources are there for the availability so we have to collect all the resources that is the first one in the generate information then analysis and understanding of situations so we have to analyze that how the situation will create a new objective or a need for that that should be then formulation of objectives formulation of objectives so we have to identify that what is the need of existing this organization that is what it called as formulation of objectives then assessment of current organizational programs so we have to assess the 
current organizational programs and then we have to uh, make new program for that organization. Then designing an alternative course of action. If they want to make a change, they have to arrange for that alternative uh, course of action what to be done. Then we have to take alternative course of action to be analyzed and then we can select it. Okay. Then preparation of implementation plan. How to implement that? We have to uh, make sure that how we will do this or how we will apply this. So that is to be done best plan various uh, derivative plans such as policies, procedures, schedules, methods, budget, everything to be we have to plan and that to be for each session it has to be mentioned. Then implementation plan we have to make control and monitor. We have to make sure that how we will analyze, analyze the evaluation process how we will do it. That is the control technique and then monitoring technique. That is maybe auditing internal and external auditing and that may be by using per technique or any uh, uh, any new methods critical path they are using for the control. Anything can be there used for the control of the then evaluation. So, if the planning the last step is there for the evaluation and we have to make sure that we are achieving the goals as per we have planned then we can impl implement it. So, these all are the steps I have already told you this I have taken from the general management text. So, so these steps are there in the planning process. If you are re referring different text then you will get it a different aspect. Uh, slight variation is there. I think it is clear. Then comes the organization. Organization means it is the arrangement of personnel for facilitating the accomplishment of some agreed purpose through allocation of functions and the responsibilities. Organization of the organization is the arrangement of personnel for facilitating the accomplishment of some agreed purpose through allocation of functions and responsibilities. Man and the main in actual arrangement we are man, money, methods, machines, how utilizing that we are arranging here in the organization. Okay. So, organization will already have given you the organization chart separate topic here you have to in generally what do you mean by organization okay. So, next we can see the importance of organization. It increases managerial efficiency of organization is uh, properly uh, that uh, aspect of function is there that will increase the managerial efficiency. Then it ensures an optimum use of human efforts. Human efforts in a maximum utilization we can uh, make sure that organization is properly function. Then it places proportionate and balanced emphasis on various activities. Various activities are different section like in the activities of our department that should be uh, make sure that there is a balance between that. Then it facilitate coordination between the different activities. Then it provides scope for training and developing the managers. Managers in the development in, a, in service education uh, further growth in a, that will facilitate the organization. Then comes it invite creative and uh, innovative. If organization is properly functioned that should stimulate the creativity and the innovative ideas of the managers and employees. Then it to prevent growth of corruptors. Corruption on Dagatilana Varina, proper systematic Ayatollah organization, organization, organization on Dangila, okay, within the system. Then we can move on to the principles of organization. Principles in any than your question, where are under organization the principles, unity of objectives, 
then principles of coordination, principles of efficiency, principles of specialization, principles of unity of command. We have general management in the principles of the principles of the principles, but uh, some of the principles we are applying here. Okay. What is the first one is the unity of objectives. Unity of objectives, the objectives may be divided into departmental objectives and organizational objectives that should made clear to all concerned persons so as to enable them to do their best to achieve the objectives. Up objectives are to achieve unity of objective in the meaning clearly defined the main objectives. So then specific objectives or the departmental objectives so we clarify clarify then principles of coordination coordination among the different uh, departments of the organization that is what it called as coordination then efficiency efficiency in the performance of the employees okay leadership and efficiency that is where it should be enough opportunity for the managers to effectively uh, lead the subordinate then Specialization. Specialization means uh, they have the each employee should be uh, specialized in the area where they are uh, skilled. That is important. Then unity of command. Unity of command means chain of command, hierarchical command should be maintained. Okay. One supervisor to the next subordinate, immediate level subordinates to the next subordinate like that. Then Authority and responsibility already I told you, then delegation already I told you, then span of control. Span of control means and meaning uh, the number of subordinates a manager can effectively and efficiently manage. One manager na yathra yala control yam betum, adana ana nammala span of control enna parayinnada. Then scalar principle, scalar principle na orna hierarchy, yam parayinnello. The authority should flow from top level to the second level, third level like that to the subordinates and it should flow only in a hierarchical way that is the scalar principle, scalar chain of command or hierarchy. Then span of command already I told you one supervisor or manager can control only a limited subordinates. Then balance. Balance between the work and the atmosphere that is what it called as balance. Then flexible. Organization should be a flexible one. It should not be a rigid one. These all are the principles of organization. Then comes the steps. Steps include identification of activities. That is the first one. What are the activities to be performed in the organization that to be first identify the activities. Then deciding the various types of objectives of each activities. And the key on the medical department, surgical department, in nursing, research department, whatever it is or maybe uh, orthopedic and uh, then uh, higher centers they have a lot of departments that to be and objectives of each activities to be specially or clarity to be there. Then we have to make sure the grouping of the activities. Uh, if for example uh, those who are performing the nursing function that has to be grouped Medic me uh, medicine or surgery or whatever it is that activity to be grouped. Okay. Then comes assignment of job to the employees. So, on the basis of their specialization we have to assign the employees that is the assignment. So, these all are the steps in the organization. Identification of activities, deciding the various types of objectives of each activities, then grouping of activities, then assignment of job to the employees. Then determining the authority, responsibility and accountability. Already I told you what is the meaning of this one. So, we have to make sure that. Then delegation of authority to the subordinates. We have to delegate that to the subordinates. Then integration between the identified group of activities. That for example, simple I have to say, department of Tamil integration and we will arrange integration. So, these all are the steps. Then we can move on to the characteristics 
the responsibility of members of enterprise should be clearly defined. And then responsibility and all other clear I to define Chedirikana. Then there should be a clear line of authority, responsibility, and it should always correlate with the corresponding authority. There is a single line of command Irikinam. Then responsibility of higher authority for the act of its subordinates, its absolute Irikinam. Uh, authority share in the delegate in the then number of levels of authority should be kept minimum okay other minimum irikinum uh, level of uh, three level of one in the name of our control and part irikin then work of every person should be confined so as far as possible we have to ethra work on a chain day and all other fix irikin then Line function should be separated from the staff function. Already organization structure in the Padicha Matrame, and the line function and the staff function are Then limit the number of positions that can be coordinated by a single executive. And already Paranana span of control. Then the organization should be flexible, I reckon, then only we can function that. I think it's clear up to here. Then comes staffing. Post D Corp in the staffing I. Staffing is the function by which managers build an organization through the recruitment, selection, and development of individual as capable employees. For staffing now the main I to recruitment, selection, and development of individuals as capable employees. This given by Mac Erland. I think it's clear. Then comes the importance filling the organizational position, first one, then retaining the personnel, then developing the competencies of the employees, then staffing comprises the following. And the Kiana staffing will all other. First manpower planning, employees and job description of BH. Job plan, chayega, job specification, job description, job analysis on the first one, manpower planning. Ila. Second, recruitment on employees. Ne. Third, selection on the fourth, placement on then transfer, promotion, etc. Then training and development. So, these all are the points coming under the staffing. Manpower planning, recruitment, selection, placement, transfer, promotion and training and development. Then comes the directing or leading. Number planning, organizing, staffing, and directing or leading. Leading, directing is the main function of the top level managers. It consists of the process and the technique utilizing in issuing instructions and making certain that operations are carried out as plans. Heyman Parayanadana, or organization, the Ella operation, other systematic item, proper item, other carry out to change as planned. I am not going to do that. That directing or leading. Then, main aspect of directing is first one is communication. You can learn detail. Leadership, then motivation, then comes the supervision. Okay. So, these all are the main four aspects of directing. Communication, leadership, motivation, supervision. And in the details, I have to go into the details. Topic. What are the features of directing? Through directing, management initiate actions in the organization. One management and function start in directing. Then directing function initiate at the top level in the organization. At the top level initiate in the, then is performed at every level of management. All level under. Then it is a continuous process. Then it has dual objective. Dual objective means uh, central objective under then for each uh, departments they have their own objectives. Then importance of directing, direction initiate action, then integrate employees efforts, then attempt to get maximum out of individuals, then facilitate changes in the organization. Then provide balance and stability in the organization. I think directing the important points are in the you can further detail at the particular text. Then comes controlling the last function. It is determining what is being accomplished by 
evaluating the performance and if necessary applying corrected measures so that the performance takes place according to the plan it's given by terry നമ്മൾ പ്ലാൻ ചെയ്ത മാതിരി നമ്മളുടെ കാര്യങ്ങൾ നടന്നോ എന്നുള്ള ആ പെർഫോമൻസ് ഇവാലിയേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്ന പ്രോസസ്സിനാണ് കൺട്രോളിംഗ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് കൺട്രോളിങ്ങിൻ്റെ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് ആണ് ഫസ്റ്റ് വൺ ഈസ് ഈസ് ഫോർവേഡ് ലുക്കിംഗ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഓൾവേസ് ഫോർവേഡ് ലുക്കിംഗ് ആണ് ദെൻ ബോത്ത് എക്സിക്യൂട്ടീവ് പ്രോസസ്സ് ആൻഡ് അഡ്മിനിസ്ട്രേറ്റീവ് പ്രോസസ്സ് ഇവിടെ ഉണ്ട് ദെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് എ കണ്ടിന്യൂസ് പ്രോസസ്സ് ആണ് ദെൻ എ കൺട്രോൾ സിസ്റ്റം ഈസ് എ കോർഡിനേറ്റ് ഇൻ്റഗ്രേറ്റഡ് സിസ്റ്റം ആണ് ഓക്കെ ദെൻ ബേസിക് കൺട്രോൾ പ്രോസസ്സ് ഏതൊക്കെയാണെന്നാണ് ചോദിക്കുന്നത് ലാസ്റ്റ് ഇയറിലെ ഒരു ഷോർട്ട് നോട്ടായിരുന്നു കൺട്രോളിംഗ് അപ്പോൾ നിങ്ങളിത് ഏത് വേണമെങ്കിലും എങ്ങനെ വേണമെങ്കിലും ചോദിക്കാവുന്നതാണ് ഈ പോയിൻറ്റിൻ്റെ ബേസിൽ നിങ്ങൾ അതിൻ്റെ ഡീറ്റെയിൽസ് പഠിക്കേണ്ടതാണ് ബേസിക് കൺട്രോൾ പ്രോസസ്സ് ഫസ്റ്റ് എസ്റ്റാബ്ലിഷ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡ്സ് ആണ് ഒരു ഓർഗനൈസേഷനിൽ സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡ്സ് പ്രൊസീജിയേഴ്സിനും പ്രോട്ടോകോളിനും എല്ലാം ഉണ്ടാക്കുക ദെൻ മെഷർമെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് പെർഫോമൻസ് ആണ് അത് എംപ്ലോയ്സിൻ്റെ മെഷർമെൻറ്റ്സ് ആവാം അപ്രൈസൽ പെർഫോമൻസ് ആവാം ഓഡിറ്റിംഗ് നടത്തി വർക്ക് പ്ലേസിൽ പെർഫോമൻസ് ആവാം ദെൻ ടേക്കിംഗ് കറക്റ്റീവ് ആക്ഷൻസ് ദെൻ വാട്ട് ആർ ദ ടൈപ്സ് ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് കൺട്രോളിംഗ് ബഡ്ജറ്റിംഗ് ഇൻറ്റേണൽ ഓഡിറ്റിംഗ് എക്സ്റ്റേണൽ ഓഡിറ്റിംഗ് റിപ്പോർട്ട്സ് സ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ഓർഡേഴ്സ് റൂൾസ് ആൻഡ് ലിമിറ്റേഷൻസ് ദെൻ ജോബ് ഡിസ്ക്രിപ്ഷൻ പേഴ്സണൽ ഒബ്സർവേഷൻ സൂപ്പർവിഷൻ ദെൻ പാട്ട് സൊ ദീസ് ഓൾ ആർ ദ ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് കൺട്രോളിംഗ് ബഡ്ജറ്റിംഗ് ഇൻറ്റേണൽ ഓഡിറ്റിംഗ് എക്സ്റ്റേണൽ ഓഡിറ്റിംഗ് റിപ്പോർട്ട്സ് സ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ഓർഡേഴ്സ് റൂൾസ് ആൻഡ് റിമിറ്റേഷൻസ് ജോബ് ഡിസ്ക്രിപ്ഷൻസ് പേഴ്സണൽ ഒബ്സർവേഷൻസ് സൂപ്പർവിഷൻ പാട്ട് പാട്ട് മീൻസ് പ്രോഗ്രാം ഇവാലുവേഷൻ ആൻഡ് റിവ്യൂ ടെക്നിക്ക് അതൊരു സെപ്പറേറ്റ് ടോപ്പിക്ക് തന്നെയാണ് ഓക്കെ സോ ദീസ് ഓൾ ആർ ദ ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് പോയിൻറ്റ്സ് കമ്മിങ് അണ്ടർ ദ പോസ്റ്റ് ഡി കോർബ് ഓക്കെ so i will conclude today's topic uh, it's a broad one ayirunu introduction to management ila definition then uh, levels then differences then functions then elements then post decor planning organizing staffing directing and then controlling i think briefly i have taken all the aspect uh, i think it's clear നിങ്ങൾക്ക് എന്തെങ്കിലും ഇഫ് യു ഹാവ് എനി ഡൗട്ട് യു ക്യാൻ ക്ലാരിഫൈ വിത്ത് മീ ഓർ യു ക്യാൻ ആസ്ക് ഓർ യു ക്യാൻ റെഫർ ദ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് നിങ്ങളിത് സബ്സ്ക്രൈബ് ചെയ്തിട്ടില്ലെങ്കിൽ യു പ്ലീസ് സബ്സ്ക്രൈബ് ദ ചാനൽ ഇഫ് പുട്ട് യുവർ കമൻസ് ഓൺ ദ കമൻറ്റ് ബോക്സ് ഓൾസോ താങ്ക് യു സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് ഫോർ യുവർ സപ്പോർട്ട് ഓക്കെ ബൈ സി യു വിത്ത് അനദ